Now, the Home Office has built up a stock of 16,000 properties to house asylum seekers, despite chronic shortages across the UK of homes for young people, families, veterans and the homeless. The Home Office have been offering landlords five-year guaranteed full rent deals to take over the management of properties as they attempt to transfer asylum seekers out of hotels that cost eight million quid a day, of course. Well, I can now speak with Russell Quirk, property expert on this. Russell, welcome to the show. Always a Uh pleasure. Another incident, Russell, of Britons being at the back of the queue. 16,000 properties hoovered up by the government at great cost to the taxpayer. Once again, people wondering who on earth comes first in this country. Yeah, so if you're one of the 1.2 million people that are on the UK housing waiting list, uh, you know, generally sort of people that are paid into the system and that are deserving of that social housing, you can be uh, very... Uh, you can it, you can understand the sympathy that people will have for them, given that they are being put to the back of the queue, as you put it, uh, whereby asylum seekers are being prioritised. And of course, th- this is not just asylum seekers. Let's be really honest here, Martin. This is often those that are coming over on dinghies with no ID, not women, not children, 25-year-olds from Albania, for instance, not a war torn country, by the way, um, who are then being given priority by these idiotic councils and this haphazard, wayward, incompetent government uh, over and above the people that are paid into the tax system. There's 16,000 homes, by the way. This is just the tip of the iceberg, Martin. So you've got 16,000 homes that have been stockpiled by the Home Office on a rental basis. The average rent, by the way, in the UK is about £1,000 per month. So the calculation just for this particular initiative means that we're still paying half a million pounds per day to rent those 16,000 homes. So Rishi Sunak's ridiculous... Uh, ridiculous kind of uh, prophecy or his decision, his policy, the revelation that he was going to uh, he was going to appeal to the masses by taking people as asylum seekers out of hotels and hostels that then should be lauded as some kind of you know clever initiative that we should give him credit for. And um, all he's done is then take rental houses away from yeah. uh, people that have, that have paid into the system. But but the other thing, Martin, sorry, just quickly, is there are councils across the country, and I've got a huge, huge list here, just very, very, very quickly, Winchester, Preston, North Norfolk, North Yorkshire, Waltham Forest, Portsmouth, Basingstoke. These local authorities are actually buying homes, so mm. new and used homes, specifically for the purposes of housing asylum seekers. So this is taking stock away from first-time buyers that otherwise would be able to buy those homes and stock away from renters who actually have very, very little choice right now as it is because there's a housing shortage. This is a disgrace, Martin. Yeah, and, and Russell, um, expert um, overview there. Serco, Clear Springs and Mears, the three contractor companies to do this, have been paid £4 billion, Russell, over 10 years to hoover up this housing. And the council, as you touched upon there, Russell, I'm especially fascinated by what I see as a kind of refugees welcome mindset that seems to continually become a working class problem. When you look at the communities where the cheap housing is being hoovered up top of the list places like Hull Bradford Teesside what then happens Russell is you create ghettos you create ghettos where locals can't afford housing ghettos where asylum seekers are dumped nowhere near where where the policy makers live nowhere near Gary Lineker's place nowhere near the politicians driving this through and it becomes a working class problem dumped on those communities with no say whatsoever yeah, no, indeed. And the Home Office and indeed these councils, they, they are buying masses of properties in the areas that you and I have just referenced. So, um, you know, without any cultural assimilation, I think, as we would call it, um, just, yeah, dumping these people, often not knowing who they are, not forgetting that a lot of these so-called asylum seekers are dumping their ID over the side of the dinghy into the English Channel, um, you know, and, and expecting that uh, that that integration, that uh, that kind of that neighbourhood dynamic to carry on without any issues. We see what have happened, what's happened in asylum hostels and asylum hotels, where you know many have been set fire to. Uh, there have been all sorts of trouble. In fact, there's a there's a statistic, Martin, that in the last three years, nearly two thousand serious incidents of assault 
arson and sexual offences have occurred within those asylum hotels and hostels by people that are seeking asylum. That's just going to be transferred further into our communities, into housing, whereby these people are going to be living next door to us and opposite us. Yeah, and Russell, there's a case we've been following very closely on GB News on my show, and that's 300 um, asylum seekers being dumped into luxury apartments in Farnborough. There's been a huge backlash by the locals, but oftentimes, Russell, these communities, they're not politically motivated, they're not integrated, there's very little so social cohesion, and so, once again, it's foisted upon those communities with no say in the matter. Yeah, and, and you know, we all know what the answer here is. You know, that that's to either turn back the boats, frankly, or to repatriate those people that shouldn't be here. Particularly, you know, the forty-five percent or so that actually don't receive asylum. You know, they're, they're not even removed. You know, so these are the people, the asylum seekers that have had failed asylum applications that are still housed at the taxpayers' expense. You know, so you, you've not even got the issue around you know, so-called legitimate asylum seekers, bearing in mind we accept more asylum applications than just about any other country in Europe. So we're pretty soft. Imagine being an economic migrant from Albania, a 25-year-old with his new iPhone 15 and his kind of, you know, expensive trainers and tracksuit, jumping on that boat thinking, I've absolutely made it in life. Britain, no wonder they're uh, trawling through all of these European countries to get to us. You know, not only is Britain going to welcome that person and probably grant them asylum, you're going to get a free house, not just a hotel room, but a free house, as well as benefits, education, NHS and so on. It really is an utter disgrace. Uh, the government could do something about it. Clearly, Rishi Sunak and the Home Office, the bureaucrats, the civil service in the Home Office, for some odd reason, are deciding not to against the will of the British people. Russell Quirk, excellent, brilliant, and yet slightly depressing analysis from you. Thank you very much for speaking out. As ever, always a pleasure.